Time again for Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, dog trainer at Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, VFW Drive Hyde Park. It's the show that delves into the training, socializing behavior and nutrition of your dog. And as always, brought to you by Guy's Farm and Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And we're back with the trainer, Ian Grant, and today we're talking about therapy dogs. And I know Vermont has its own therapy dogs, but today we are talking about therapy dogs to our south as in the Miami airport. Yeah, they've decided to add a group, I think it was five dogs, I said, adding as a part of their staff, if you will, uh, Mm. therapy dogs to help people that have maybe a little anxiety when they're flying. Do we need to define what a therapy dog is before we go too far, just Uh, in case people don't know? Just just briefly. Yeah, I mean, service dogs have complete access, public access to wherever they need to go, their client needs to go, their owner needs to go. These dogs have gone through extensive training. They're the only dogs that have public access. Therapy dogs do not have public access, meaning they can't go every single place that we go. They're just, it's not allowed. So this is something that the Miami airport brings in. Obviously, the airport is a place that you can bring dogs because people fly with dogs all the time. So, you know, as far as, and then emotional support dogs are just there for somebody to lean on. They may have other, you know, like a PTSD or something like that. Therapy dogs certainly are the ones that are able to walk up to anybody and just let them pet them and lean on them and, you know, be in their presence and, you know, hopefully give, bring them some comfort. Bring some people less stress in yeah. an airport. Now, there's a place where stress needs to be lessened. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The cool part is, you know, dogs like this have run the gamut of what they're going to run into. I mean, crowds and noise and the golf carts that go zipping by carrying people around, the loudspeaker, everything. There's all sorts of things that they were, you know, they get desensitized to. So, you know, I think this means a lot for, you know, the the people that are flying around, you know, to be able to maybe get rid of some of that anxiety while they're flying. And dogs are great for something like this. Yeah. Um, you know, my one concern that I would have for this is, you know, hey, if you're going to bring Tika to the airport, you got to make sure that Tika gets along with other dogs because now <laughs> yes. there's going to be more dogs moving around. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously it's not going to be like there's a pack of 30 dogs running through the airport, but you certainly want to make sure that, you know, your dog is well socialized if you are. If you come across a therapy dog. Yeah. It's not, yeah. we don't want it turning into a dog park. <laughs> no, that's for sure. You know, you have all these uh, different, uh, and then it ends up there's more stress. <laughs> Absolutely. With, with dog owners. So, yeah. uh, so uh, therapy dogs have to have some sort of training when they're in an airport. Now, do they need different training from therapy dogs that are just out in the community? Um, you know, for if they're doing the airport, obviously that's going to be a lot more extensive. Their handlers are probably getting a lot more education and knowledge. I brought one of my dogs, Maddie, to a uh, therapy dogs of Vermont test probably, gosh, it might have been four years ago or something, maybe five years ago, just because I wanted to see what it was like. It didn't to me. It didn't matter to me if Maddie was going to be a therapy dog or not. She's still going to be who she is. Right. Uh, but I thought it was good for me to be able to bring that education to other people that ask me. So they have to get used to people in wheelchairs, people in walkers, canes, balls bouncing left and right, being able to sit and stay in a certain spot for you while you move away. You know, there's all sorts of noises. Somebody grabbing their tail. You know, I mean, that's a lot for a dog to handle is when, you know, if some strange person walks up or a strange little kid that just doesn't know any better and grabs a dog's tail, we got to make sure that that's bulletproof Mm. because that kind of stuff can happen. And so Therapy Dogs of Vermont is an excellent resource if if people want to look into getting their dog tested and, you know, to be able to learn more about it. But, you know, that's our, our local chapter of it. But obviously it goes on throughout the country and... This is, I think this is a move in the right direction. People are doing it for the right reasons, um, you know, to help out people that are flying. So we'll just uh, keep our fingers crossed that uh, we don't read anything bad about it in the, on the, in the newspapers. So has it been a success in Miami that you read? Was it a success in having the therapy dogs there? Well, I think they did a test run with it. And, um, you know, look, I, anytime we're in a setting like that and you see a dog, it gets some attention because it's not normal. And when you see something like that and they're able to give it a test run and and run it by people that are maybe a little nervous or anxious and they're able to, 
you know, pet a dog and have that comfort makes、mm-hmm. you feel good. It's like okay, if, you know, for that time being, you forgot about what you were going to do and where you're headed, and you're kind of in that moment. So, I think from what I read, things were going well so far, and we'll just hope for the best. But therapy dogs were not able to locate missing、uh, luggage. <laughs> no, <though. laughs> <laughs> and that then that's where all the therapy really needs to be. Yes,、sometimes. yes. But therapy dogs can't handle that. Sorry, there's only so much they can do. Right. <laughs> Back with our question from the doggy bag coming up in just a moment here on Talking Dogs. Back with Talking Dogs with Ian Grant. Find out more about his facility, Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, on VFW Drive in Hyde Park. You can email him, Ian at vtdogbnb.com, or you can also go to his website, which is Vermont Dog Trainer, all spelled out. dot com. The question this morning, Ian, is what is the best way to introduce an eight-week-old puppy to an older dog? Oh. Dinner for two, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Not, A not, candlelight not, dinner, walk on the beach. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I guess not. <laughs> yeah.、Um. <laughs> This is a great question because you have two opposite ends of the spectrum. You got the energetic little eight-week-old puppy. You've got the older dog that's got the been there, done that. I don't have the time for this kind of stuff.、Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't change the meeting if these dogs were the exact same age to what they are here. I want to take these dogs for a walk, and they don't have to go nose to nose or nose to butt during the walk. To me, if you, you know, if I brought my puppy and met you at your house and we took, you know, Gemma and Tika for a walk. And we didn't let them snip each other at all during the walk. And at the end of the walk, I got in my car and left. That's an interaction. They've met, so they don't have to physically touch, and they don't have to get an inch away from each other to meet. And I think that's a big misconception when it comes to you know meet and greets or passbys or anything like that. So for an eight-week-old puppy, obviously we can't go on a three-hour walk. Or if we have a senior dog, we can't go on a three-hour walk. So to me, this is just going to be a bunch of little walks. Probably the first day, you don't have to do this, you know, to get them meet. You don't have to repeat it daily for three weeks or anything like that.、Uh, but what I would do is the first couple of walks, get them kind of used to how they're walking with each other, and then getting them back. You know, maybe towards the end of the day, I would probably see how they meet. You know, obviously we want to get used to a crate for an eight-week-old puppy, and you know, putting that puppy in the crate and having them meet that way is is good. That way, there's no concern as to anything bad that's going to happen, and then from there you can just build on that. But nothing to be too concerned about. But it's a good question. Somebody's being proactive about what to do with their puppy. So that's the process of these two dogs are only meeting and then they're separating. Now, what about if an eight-week-old puppy is actually joining the family of an older dog? Same sort of process. Same exact process. I wouldn't change it at all. I did the same thing with Gemma. The first thing we did. Got back to the house and went for a walk. I, I want to establish that this is somebody that we've added into our pack, and we can build on it and go forward from there. So it's not a free for all. They just, you know, the puppy doesn't get to romp all over your older dog, but it's good to have an older dog that's going to be able to teach this puppy as it grows.、Hmm. Got a question for Ian? You can email him with your question at ian at vtdogbnb dot com. Well, next week we're getting closer to hunting season. Actually, we started hunting season. We started bow and arrow, but、uh, rifle season will be starting pretty soon as well. So, some、uh, tidbits about the hunting season and your dog, then, right? Yeah, we got to keep our dogs safe.、Uh, you know, they're animals too, and we've got to make sure that they stay safe.、Uh, the hunters can see them, and you know, it's that time of year. Plus, it's getting darker sooner, so a lot of things are changing. I've noticed about the darkness part、yes. too. Yes. On talking dogs with Ian Grant, brought to you by Guys from and Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St Albans. And for the trainer Ian Grant, I'm Roland LeJoy, and we are talking dogs.